Hi, for this video we're going to look at finding the sample variance and standard deviation. So make sure that if you are trying to calculate this that you are dealing with a sample and not a population. The sample variance, the symbol that we use is S squared. So if you see S squared that's talking about the variance. It is found by taking each individual value and subtracting the mean then you would square those differences, add up all of the squared differences, and divide by your sample size minus one. This is the biggest difference between calculating sample standard deviation and population standard deviation is the part that's in the denominator. The reason we divide by n minus one is because um, since we are dealing with a sample and not the entire population, the sample usually has some sort of differences compared to the entire population. So we're giving ourselves a little more flexibility when we divide by a smaller number. Um, it makes our standard deviation slightly larger to account for the differences between the sample and the actual population. So make sure that you remember if you are dealing with a population, you divide by the entire population um, size. In sample variance and standard deviation, you always divide by n minus 1. The relationship between variance and standard deviation is the standard deviation is always the square root of the variance. And if you know the standard deviation, if you square it, you will get the variance. As far as the calculations go, for the top part, it's very similar to what we did with population standard deviation and variance. So we always start by finding the mean of our sample. And remember, x bar is the symbol that we use for mean in a sample. So we would take and sum all of our values, add up all of our values, and divide by the number in our sample. So if I add these together, I get 17 plus 13 is 30, 44, and 50. And then we would divide it by the number in our sample, which is 5. And so we end up with a sample mean of 10. We would then go through and we would calculate um, our differences between each of our individual values and our mean. So I would take 8 minus 10. Be very careful about signs. So this would give us negative 2. 9 minus 10 would give us negative 1. 13 minus 10 would give us positive 3. 14 minus 10 is 4, and then 6 minus 10 gives us negative 4. The sum of this column is always going to be 0. Um, since you have found the mean, and it was the average of all of those numbers, when you subtract and find the difference between each of your individual values and add them up, it's always going to give you a sum of 0. Um, the more variation that you have, the more these values are away from the mean. Um, the larger your variance and standard deviation will be. So with this, after, we can't do a whole lot with zero, which is why we have this next column. For the next column, what we are going to do is we're going to square all of our differences that we found in the previous column. So we would take negative 2 and we would square it, which would give us positive 4. We would do the same thing for negative 1. For 3 squared would give us 9, 4 squared gives us 16, and then negative 4 squared also gives us positive 16. For this, as far as the math goes, it's not that complicated. It's just that if you have a thousand data points, you don't want to do hand calculations with this. So most of the time in the real world when we are dealing with larger data sets, um, we do use some sort of technology to help us. You can use graphing calculators, you can use Excel, you can use programs like R, Minitab, there's a lot of different software um, out there that allow you to find these calculations. So we would find the sum of this, and the sum of this value is what's going to go on the top of our formula. So if I add everything together, 16 and 16 gives us 32, plus this 10 here gives us 42, plus 4 more gives us 46. So the sum of the squares of our deviations is 46. So what we would do is we would now use our formula to find our sample variance and standard deviation. So remember that we are dealing with a sample for this one. Um, that's something that you would know if you are working with your own data, whether you are working with a sample or whether you are working with a population. Um, if you're in a class learning this, it will say it in the problem itself, whether you are dealing with a sample or whether you are dealing with the population.
So for this, like I said before, the formula is S squared is equal to the sum of the deviations from the actual values to the mean squared divided by n minus one. Don't forget this part right here that we do have to subtract. It gives us a little more flexibility. It makes it a little bit bigger um, so that if our sample is different from our population, it counts. It accounts for that. So the sum of our x minus x bar squared term ended up being 46. And then we would divide it by five minus one, which is four. And so for this, we end up with 11.5. If you happen to watch the population standard deviation, you found that this was 9.2. Um, the sample variance always ends up being slightly larger than the population variance. Um, to find the sample standard deviation, we would just take the square root of the variance. So the sample standard deviation is found by, always found by taking the square root of the variance. So for this, we would take the square root of 11.5, which gives us approximately 3.39 one, two. So on average, each of these deviations um, deviates from the mean by 3.3912 um, units. As always, thanks for watching.